using WordPress and awesome. So, are you guys ready? Yeah. Excellent. Um, I'd like to do the questions at the end if you have any. And uh, I'll also be available for the rest of the afternoon if you would like to talk to me. So, are you guys ready? Are you awake? It's like right before the break, we'll get a snack soon and it'll be awesome. Because I'm all about awesome, apparently. So I am a podcaster. I've been podcasting and using WordPress with my podcast. Uh, I have three podcasts, actually. Um, since 2010. And I also work as a programmer analyst at a market research firm. So I do other kind of programming. I use data tables rather than web pages. So my WordPress expertise is more hobby based. And awesome does not mean the animated gifts. Um, usually uh, the, the animals like to talk during the presentation. So if anything lags, you can just read the captions. So what's going on? There we go. Why are we here? Um, so we're talking about podcasting and what a podcast is, 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 does everyone know what a podcast is? I, ha I see a lot of people not raising your hands, so either you don't know what it is, and I'll, I'll just tell you, then we'll all know. A, a podcast is a digital, audio or visual, episodic program that's transmitted over the internet, either by you going to a web page and downloading it, or uh, using a, a podcatcher or a RSS feed or something like that. So that is what a podcast is. It's like a radio show or a television show for the internet. And what we're going to talk about today um, is what I call guerrilla podcasting. Now, it's a, something we, I came up with on my own. I think other people have guerrilla podcasting. But what I call guerrilla podcasting, I use this thing right here and I record my podcast and I don't need a computer to record it. And I publish it sometimes on the same day without much editing. And I thought that this would be something good to bring to WordCamp for the new, the beginner track, because I, I think a lot of times we get thinking that we have to do a lot of technical stuff in order to create a nice product. And I don't think so. I think my podcast is pretty awesome. And so that's Gorilla Podcast Casting. We're going to talk about how to plan, publish, and promote. And if there's only one thing that you take away from this, it is the importance of, of making sure that your RSS feed for your podcast is dedicated and works. And the RSS feed stands for Really Simple Syndicated Feed. And that is what, if you're going to uh, sign up for a podcast or like iTunes, that's what iTunes yeah, that's where they get their music from. And if you mess that up, it becomes very hard to fix it, which I know from personal experience. So plan. What kind of podcast are you going to do? Think of it like a radio show. Are you going to do a few tips and do a, just be a solo person talking into a microphone? Or are you going to have a conversation with one of your best friends and someone that you have really great rapport with or are you going to do an interview show yourself? You interview other people. Whatever it, it's whatever you want to do. It's kind of if you have a business, you might want to do tips or do an educational show. Or you want to um, interview SEO experts. Then you want to figure out how long your show is going to be. Do you want to do a five-minute show, 15 minutes, 30 minutes? Am I getting any emails? Is that what that's been? Yeah, <laughs> Let me know if anything important comes up. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Let me know. I'll, I'll have to take a break or something. Um, so how long is your show going to be? My shows run around a half an hour long. Uh, there are some shows that run an hour long. It, it really, there are different schools of thought as to, you know, which ones are better. I just figure pick what you, you want to do and do it. And how often are you going to publish your show? Whatever you choose, you should publish it frequently, or not frequently, on a steady schedule. So you pick a schedule and stick to it. Um, 
um, that helps build your audience because then they'll be expecting new episodes when you publish them. What do you need for equipment? This is the beauty of, and I don't know if I mentioned, we are talking about audio podcasts mostly. All you need to do an audio podcast is a computer and a microphone. You don't need any other physical hardware to do that. I use this uh, Zoom H2 Handy Recorder to record my podcasts. And you could even use your smartphone. I've heard podcasts done over an iPhone, and it sounded pretty good. So then you'll need your software. And I have two programs that I'm suggesting. Audacity works for all platforms, and it is free. And GarageBand um, is Mac only, but I think a lot of people already have it, so they don't even need to purchase it anymore. So now you have your hardware, your software. And now you've got to consider hosting. Now when you, if, I'm assuming that most of you have your own self-hosted WordPress blogs, or that is the goal that you're gonna have a WordPress blog that you self-host. And I'm going to suggest that you get a separate hosting plan for your podcast because of because the difference between size and bandwidth. Most of your websites are you get charged for as much bandwidth as you use during a month. And podcast hosting, media hosting goes by how much how large your files are. And they have infrastructure built into their programs that will help you if your show suddenly becomes popular, your website will go down because people are downloading from your WordPress blog too much. And these are three programs, I've used all three of these. I have Buzzsprout, and that offers a free option. So if you're just gonna try it out, you can use Buzzsprout. It also is very easy to use. It's the easiest one to use, it's a pretty busy way. I've also used Blueberry. It's a little harder to use, uh, but it has, and it has better statistics than Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout uses just regular, you know, a, a straight count. They don't give you any other details with that. And the one that I'm using now for my Lounging with Lana Lee podcast, which is the, my uh, flagship, if you is Libsyn, and that has fantastic um, statistics that will give you market share and, and whatnot, and most of my people are in Maine, so just, you know. <laughs> and then hosting on your WordPress. See, I'm getting favored in my piece, you know, I'm very popular. <laughs> <laughs> so hosting on your WordPress blog, um, you will have a plugin called PowerPress. That is the only one that I'm really suggesting. And uh, when we get back to talking about the RSS feed, you're going to control that by using your blog as the RSS feed. You could use FeedBurner if you want, but then you don't really have. If FeedBurner goes down, then you, you might be screwed. Um, so you. To do that, you set up a category in your blog that's just for podcasts. And in that category, you're only going to put your posts that have media in them. And that's the MP3 file for the audio. And if you're doing video, um, I'm not sure, I don't do video. So, but, but the PowerPress will tell you what you need to do, so it's awesome. And then <laughs> um, that category will be set up as your podcast feed. And then the really simple syndication, that's what you give to iTunes. And then iTunes will check it every once in a while to see if there are any new episodes. And we'll talk more about how to set up for iTunes later. So we're all ready to go. Now we're going to create an episode. And if you're by yourself, you want to maybe write out a script or write out some talking points. And if you're with a, a buddy, you might want to write out talking points. If you're interviewing someone, 
you're going to want to prepare yourself and write out some interview questions. Uh, most of my Lounge of Lily is interview show, and so I, but it's more of a conversation. So I, uh, thank you. Have a good here, Paul. If my, it's more of a conversation between me and another person. So I write out things, and we don't end up talking about all of the questions that I write out, it's fine, but at least if there's a lag in the conversation, I have something to say in order to get us back up and going again. Now, recording your podcast, I use this, so all I have to do is turn it on. If you're using a computer and a microphone, you want to use Audacity for, for uh, <laughs> I don't have a, I'm not a Mac person. <laughs> yeah, the garage band thing. You want to use that to capture your audio. Now, if you are doing a remote podcast, you would have to do something else. Uh, people use Skype to record that. Or um, nowadays you can use Google Plus. They're especially for video casting. I think they're you're able to capture video using Google Plus chat or the the awesome thing that they have that I hardly ever use. Um, so once you record your podcast, you want to edit it. If you've already recorded it into uh, GarageBand or Audacity, then all you have to do is just edit it directly. Um, I load mine from my device into my computer and then create a file in Audacity. And then I edit it. I add music to either end and then I bump up the sound. That's how I edit it. I don't take out anything. I just let it go. Some people will add or take out, um, take out blank spots and stuff or, or take out mispronunciations and whatnot. And that's really up to you how much time you want to spend polishing your podcast. And then when I'm done, I create an MP3 with labels that will be good for iTunes. And because of the way that Audacity creates MP3s, I use Audacity, I export it into a WAV file, and then I use iTunes, the, the iTunes program, to make my MP3 file. And all of this stuff that I'm talking about, I have a sheet to hand out at the end that will have links to instructions on how to do all of this stuff. So you're not just uh, hearing me say it. And I very detailed instructions on how to do just that. If you want to, if you have a PC and you're going to be using that. All right, I'm going to take a drink of water. Now you're going to upload your podcast. When you do your editing, you will want to listen to your show and write down show notes. If you if you have talking points, that will be part of your show notes. If you wrote out a script, that would be part of your show notes. And then you want to write up a description in order to get people to want to listen to the episode. And the more detail you get really would depend on what kind of uh, audience you have. If you're doing business tips, you might want to just write out the whole thing, the whole transcript right there, and have the podcast and the text there so people can choose which one they want to, to consume. The benefit of having a podcast is that they can uh, download it to their listening device and listen to it in the car, as opposed to sitting in front of the computer and reading it on the screen. So, you have your text, and that will go into your, what I do is I upload it to Libsyn. Actually, I think I'm just gonna show you. And then I can. Turn that off. So this is what's in um, 
dashboard and I will create an episode by just clicking publish. So I'd add the title here and the description here and then I put artwork in with mine and then when I upload it, I will get and I think this is important to know because this is what we're going to use. When it's done uploading, I'll get this page. And I will get this direct download URL. And that's what I'm going to be using in my blog post for the media. And then I'll go over here. new post. Eventually, I'm sorry. I'm pressing the button. Well, I should keep talking because I'm doing a podcast too. So anyway, I put in a new post and then we have the bus, um, the power press uh, plug in and then there's a place for me to paste that link in. I'm And so we paste that link in and that was when, and I'm using the category, the podcast category, and that is what iTunes will look for when it's looking, it'll be looking at that RSS feed for the podcast. And so we've published. And now we're gonna promote and we're gonna use WordPress to help us promote. We just had a really excellent uh, SEO uh, thing a day beforehand as you talked about some of these like share. I use Shareaholic. I used to use really simple Facebook share buttons uh, because I had Google Plus and I'm, I like the Google Plus so I wanted to have it. But now Shareaholic has Google Plus and those are for people to click on links when they're in on your page. And then I use Linksme and it is a paid plugin, but what LinkMe does is it sends an automatic tweet or Facebook post when my WordPress blog publishes a new, a new post. And I like that. I, I like to have, not have to do that on my own separately, so I, I use LinkMe. So something similar to that. You can also promote by doing email lists. Uh, MailChimp and Constant Contact both have free versions. And then you can send social uh, periodic posts through social uh, networks using uh, Hootsuite and TweetDeck. And podcatchers. Now this is where you're gonna try to build more of your audience. Uh, Zoom, I, um, I just submitted a thing to Zoom. I'm not sure how popular it is, but that's a, a, a Windows-based program and they have the little Zoom players and those are not being made anymore, but apparently their podcasting community is still pretty vibrant. The big one is iTunes, because everybody has access to iTunes. And when you sign up for iTunes, they ask for the RSSC for your podcast. And when I first signed up, for Lounging with Lana Lee, I was using Buzzsprout as my my media, and I used their RSS feed because all of the, you know you have RSS feed for everything instead of my own. And then when I decided to change companies, it was very difficult for me to change the RSS feed in iTunes because there's no place to do it. You can't like click on it and say, oh yeah, this is my show. I want to change the RSS feed. Um, somehow it got fixed. It's like one of those things when you reboot the computer and start it up again, and now it's working correctly. But that is the takeaway that, um, and I have several posts um, on the materials that will talk to you about RSS feeds. And maybe some people here that know more about it than I do. So, takeaways. We talked about how to plan, publish, and promote. Podcast. I hope I didn't talk too fast. I think we're doing pretty good. 
And I have also this. Here's my handout. Anybody would like one? I don't know if you want to. I'll just leave them up here. Does anybody have any questions? And it has a QR code to the page, and all it's all on a web page too. Hi. Okay, so um, I, I do sort of a podcast on um, Blog Talk Radio. Oh, yeah. And what I like about that is it has a player that I can embed in um, a, a website. Um, but it doesn't go into iTunes, so I thought that what you did was pretty cool. But I'm wondering if any of those sites have uh, a little player that show all of the... Um, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear in my presentation. That's what the uh, PowerPress plugin does, is it oh, gives cool. a player. Really? So um, now we can add a new post because it's working. Actually, let me go into one of the previous posts. So this is my most recent podcast. You can see I have I um So this is the post itself. And I have and I apparently have too long of a load time for my web page. Um, so this is the player up here at the top, and this is here is what the PowerPress plugin will put in for you. And you can change how it looks. And then there's also, uh, I have a enhanced podcast that is, Libsyn has a wizard player with a picture in it. I'm not sure why it's not opening up here. Let's do that. So that is unavailable. That's why I have this. <laughs> this is really cool, but it doesn't always work, so I always have a backup for it. Does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, there's a gentleman back there with the... Uh... Uh, media aside, you mentioned podcasts. podcasts are primarily audio, but there are video podcasts. Yeah. What's the difference if it's just media between a video podcast and a video blog and it's on YouTube? Uh, a video blog? I didn't hear that last part of what you said. Like if the difference between like a, if someone makes a podcast that's a video versus yeah. like a video blog someone posts on YouTube or something. I, I think they're basically the same thing. Okay. I think it really depends on how you couch it. I, and. The reason why I talk more, more about the audio podcast is because th that is kind of the more portable version of it and it's easier to do. Video, like you might have to actually edit it. You have to worry about lighting and whatnot. Okay. I wasn't quite really sure what that lip, uh, lip sync. Oh, the link fee? Uh, no, the lip sync. Uh, Little sync. Yeah, that's, this, that's, This is a Libsyn, it is a media hosting company. So all they do is host audio and video for podcasting and, and video casting. And there are many other, I don't even know what that thing is. Um, there are many other um, companies that you can use. That's the one that I recommend. And the reason why I recommend it is because it's scalable. You can start off with a small show and, and pay just a small amount, or you could um, do iPhone apps with it too. And it, it's all built into their infrastructure. There's, I mean, there's lots of ways to store media, because like, you can do it on Amazon S3. And things yeah, like you that. can use that as well. 
Can you use that to send it to go RSS feed from, or does that still go onto your page? That would be easy to do. You do want to, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Sorry. So if you use Easy Video Player, which I've got with Amazon S3, put my recordings on my podcast page of my blog, that's still my feed to, Amazon, to iTunes. You're, so you're using your Amazon feed for the iTunes? I am not doing it at all. I, but I have a lot of recordings in my Amazon S3 that I can make into pop blog posts. And then can I link that blog post RSS category to iTunes? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you don't need to use lip sync or anything like right. that. Right. That iTunes thing sounds like a cool thing. The app thing sounds cool. I'm sorry? On lip sync, you said you could make an iPhone app? You can make an iPhone app, but you know that you don't have to do that. That's more like a cool thing that you can do. The the uh, so yes, you can use the Amazon feed and what you will do is create a blog category that's just for your podcast only, and you're only going to uh, put uh, media on the, with that category. And uh, then, and that's what we submit to iTunes, and then iTunes will only look at the posts that will have music in them. So it doesn't care where they live, or it just wants it on that page. Exactly. It's looking, it's just looking at our RSS feed. And just like Google Reader. Like Google Reader, if you if you if you did a a keyword search like that, is that's kind of how it works the same way. And can you make that down the um, player on your page? That player right there is that downloadable as well? Yes. There's actually a link here for downloading. Oh. Okay. And can you turn that on or on? Yes. But you kind of want people to download it. You want them to take it with them and listen to it in their car or you know while they're working out. We have one person up front here. And are we done after that, you think? Probably got another five minutes. Another five minutes, okay. If you were starting all over today, <laughs> what would you, how would you set up from day one? What would you do differently? I would use Lipson from the get-go because of its scalability. And I would wait a few times until I had a kind of a good core audience before I submitted it to iTunes. If you already have an audience, if you have hundreds of people that go into your blog every day, that's not as necessary. You you can probably just start a podcast, submit it to iTunes once it's, you have your first I, uh, episode ready and be instantly be new and notable. But that would be something I would say. Any more questions? I think it's a good time to stop because there are snacks soon and you might want to get ready.